from Jackson's Daddy. And today I want to give you a review of the Lego game, Lego Lord of the Rings. So let's just show you some um, action scenes while we're playing it right here. And I'm going to give you the pros and the cons of this game and uh, give you a summary as to whether or not we think it's a game that's really worthwhile buying. We've played most, if not all, of the Lego games. We love the Lego games. I'm a gigantic fan of Lord of the Rings, you know, grew up with uh, reading the Lord of the Rings books and uh, was very excited about the Lego Lord of the Rings game. Before I get into the specific positives and negatives, I just want to tell you that the general conclusion uh, is I don't like this game very much. And that's a real disappointment for me because I am such a fan of it. But let me give you the positives and I'll give you the negatives and tell you why I don't like the game. Um, to start off the positives, uh, I'm going to flip over to another video here as well too. Um, this is from the Minds of Moria section. You can see, you can play all the different characters. So you get Gandalf, you get Frodo, you get, uh, there's Legolas in there with his bow and arrow. I mean, you get all the characters that you want to play throughout the entire course of the game. It's a very positive thing. Also, there's a gigantic map of Middle Earth to explore, kind of like the Lego Batman 2 series where you had Gotham City, you got Middle Earth to be able to explore. So that's pretty cool. It has your normal Lego gameplay, your Lego uh, features that you're used to. You know, you, if you play other Lego games, you'll be very uh, familiar with this. There's lots to do, lots to explore. And the other thing is, for fans of Lord of the Rings like myself, it's very true to the story. So that's a very positive thing. So all of that should be reasons that you think I'd say you should buy this game, right? Uh, unfortunately, there are some significant negatives. Um, the one that is really the main one why I, I can't stand the game, at least on the Xbox version, is... You know, every Lego game has cut scenes, you know, little scenes of vignettes of, of different portions of the story, right? And uh, Lord of the Rings has that and then some. They have so many cutscenes, and for whatever reason, at least on the Xbox game I have, you cannot fast forward through these cutscenes. So you might play for a minute or two, and you gotta watch a three minute cutscene. It sucks. I mean, you should at least be able to fast forward through it. Otherwise, I've got no desire to go back and play this game again, like we do with the other Lego games, because I don't wanna watch those dang cutscenes over and over and over. Um, the other thing is, and you can see it right here, a lot of the colors are really washed out and dark really throughout the entire gameplay. I mean, let me just go back to that uh, opening scene again. This is the prologue section. You had to battle Sauron here and, and uh, try to cut off his ring. Um, it's kind of, a, uh, you, most people wouldn't even be familiar with this part of the book right here, actually, but this is uh, uh, the objective that you have to do. In fact, when you, before you even get to that, if we go back a little bit in the video, um, you've got a, a few other things that you've got to do as well here too. I don't know why the video is not playing right now, but if it would play, that would make it a little bit easier for me to show you. Well, maybe not. So we'll just go back to the Mines of Moria and play that one. Uh, in any case, the colors are very washed out and dark. A lot of the objectives are, are not really very clear. Uh, also, the missions are, are very repetitive and tedious. In this particular case right here, you have to, you know, multiple times get yourself into one of the Hobbit characters, jump up on the side, and then jump up on this, this troll's neck. And then you got to sit there and pound on his um, pound on his chain. And then once he reaches back up, you've got to shoot him with the elf's Legolas's arrow, right? So here's what's happening right now. So it's the same situation. You got to get ready to jump on his back. He's coming over to get you. You got to sit there and pound on his chain and then you're going to shoot him with Legolas's arrow, like I just said, right? Well, that seems simple enough, and, you know, we have to do stuff like that in all the Lego games, right? But it's just really tedious for whatever reason in this particular game. Everything you've got to do, it's tedious, and it's very repetitive, and it's just not all that fun. It's not as fun as the Batman games. It's not as fun. We finally killed the troll here. Here's a cutscene that you got to watch in the middle of everything, right? So you're only halfway through the mission, and you have to watch this cutscene, along with many other ones through the mission, too. The other thing is, and you know, it's obviously you're playing Lord of the Rings, you expect it's going to be somewhat violent, right? I mean, most of the Lego games have some limited level of violence in them. This one is really violent. So if any of the violence of the other games, say from Indiana Jones or Batman, may have disturbed you, you would be um, very... Uh, disturbed by Lord of the Rings, I think, uh, because you're constantly... Uh, for lack of a better word, you're constantly killing your enemies. So I'm just kind of fast-forwarding through to other scenes here throughout so you can see here. 
Um, and here's a situation where right now on the left you're battling the Balrog and on the right you're battling some other characters. You can play two-player mode on this. You can be on different areas of the screen. Even that Gandalf situation is, again, it's a very repetitive, not very imaginative thing that you have to do in order to be able to defeat the Balrog. So it's real violent. And the bottom line is it's just really not that much fun, unfortunately. I really wanted to like this game, but I just don't. And I don't have any... It's the cutscenes totally ruin it for me. Even though they're true to the story, they're just too long of the cutscenes. And I've tried to fast forward them here so you don't get bored with them. But um, if you know a way to fast forward through them on the Xbox, please let me know. On the other Lego games, they're not that much and you can fast forward them. This one, for whatever reason, you can't. And it's just, it's totally ruined the game for me. So I would not buy this game again. I haven't even finished the game because we really don't have any desire to do it. It takes too long and it's, uh, and here we go. We got another cutscene here as well too. So you, you kind of get the idea of what I'm talking about. If you're a gigantic fan of Lord of the Rings and you got a lot of time on your hands to spare, um, you know, maybe this game will be interesting to you at least one time through, but um, it wasn't very interesting to us. I, I've returned to the other LEGO games to play them again rather than to play through this one. So I'm sorry I didn't like it, but I just don't, and those are the reasons why. Have a great day!